Today, we're taking a look at a new collaboration bar certified for Microsoft Teams from our friends over at Audio Codes, the RXV80 B10, which as of right now still shows as coming soon on the Microsoft Teams devices website. The RXV80 B10 sitting right behind me consists of the RXV80 all-in-one video collaboration bar sitting at the top of this touchscreen monitor and the RX10, the portable speaker phone. Both devices are part of the room experience suite from Audio Codes. In this video, we'll be going over the unboxing of both devices, an overview of all the components, getting them all put together, cabled up, powered on, and then finally, signing into Microsoft Teams and checking out the meeting experience using the RXV80 B10. Let's dig in. At the time of this recording, the RXV80 is listed as coming soon on the Microsoft Teams devices website. It will be a collaboration bar. That is the category it shows up in. And so let's go ahead and crack open the box here. Take a look at what we get inside. First up, we've got the camera collaboration bar itself. Take our protective uh, bookends, as you will, off there. And bottom of the box, we've got cables, mounting gear, all the other fun peripheral pieces that we'll need to get this thing plugged in. A wide range of adapters for our power HDMI cable, power adapter, HDMI adapter for a different right angle there, and our Ethernet cable. And let's not forget about all the documentation that comes with these devices. The other part of the RXV80 B10 bundle that you see on the Microsoft Teams devices website is the RX10, which is again another device that falls within the uh, Audio Codes Room Experience suite. Uh, looking at the branding right up top, you'll notice that this is obviously a device that is in partnership uh, with, with another vendor out there. Um, but we'll go ahead and pop this open. You'll see that it is uh, very similar to this other vendor's uh, iteration of the uh, speakerphone. So let's go ahead and pop that open. We've got the device in here and it's protective uh, covering, nothing else in the box. So this will ship with the RXV80, just in its own separate box. And there we go. This is the speakerphone RX10 from Audio Codes. We've got this protective film on here. You can tell by those little bubbles. We'll peel that off. The RX10 speakerphone from Audio Codes provides the microphone peripheral that we will connect to our RXV80 for audio input. It has a two meter or six and a half foot distance on it. So again, this is meant for more of a huddle room or small personal room setup, or in the case of what we're gonna be setting up today, a kiosk-like setup. And as we flip this on its side, you'll notice that we've got the cord wrapped all the way around the base for storage. You can just simply pull it out and unwrap the cord. We'll plug it back in for USB. This will plug into the back of the RXV80 with the one of the, one of the available USB ports. And then there is this uh, stand at the back, kind of a little kickstand. You pop it out and we can set the device down like so. The Audio Codes RXV80 was developed in partnership with Dolby, focusing in on features like the intelligent acoustics, which gives you the full room pickup and delivers high quality audio by focusing in on voices regardless of where they're at in the room and what sort of external disturbances are detected and making sure that the sound quality for every speaker is really zoned in on. Built-in video capabilities include an Ultra HD 4K image sensor, a wide viewing angle with a field of view of 110 degrees, HDR video mapping, EPTZ capabilities, an output resolution of 1080p, and a frame rate of 30 frames per second. For audio, you have full duplex, noise suppression, acoustic echo cancellation, and voice separation, as well as the partnership with Dolby producing the audio output through HDMI. There is a four times beamforming microphone array and voice pickup range is at 15 feet. 
For our device interfaces, we've got a single HDMI output, a HDMI input on the roadmap. There is two USB 3.0 host ports, Wi-Fi dual band support is there, Bluetooth support is there. Then we've got the network interface RJ45 connection, a Kensington lock, and it supports your tripod mounting underneath the device as well. The remote control here for it, and if we get a close look there, you'll notice after we get, uh, there we go, the Microsoft Teams button built right in there next to your on off button. You've got your camera button. You've got some audio up and down, answer, hang up a call, uh, mute button. Uh, lots of great capability built right into the remote control here. Next up, we've got our power adapter. Now, the power adapter, as you'll notice, looks a little different than you might expect, and that's because uh, this is built to have all these interchangeable adapters for different countries. It comes with a great many adapters, so regardless of where you are using this, chances are you'll be able to plug it in. I've got the one that we need here for the US. So very simply, we will slide this into place. You hear it click in, and we're ready to rock with that. As you can see, this comes with a mount. We can put the mount on the wall. The mount comes with screws and anchors. We've also got the little uh, bottom mounting screw that will screw into the bottom plate right down here underneath of it to keep it firmly in place on a wall somewhere. In our case, we're gonna go ahead and set this thing on our touchscreen and uh, set it up like a little kiosk style device. The HDMI cable that is included, and of course, the little HDMI adapter to get the uh, optimal angle in case uh, your cable doesn't bend to the uh, to, to the angle that it needs to be plugged in at. So kind of a handy little thing. I haven't seen an adapter like that before. And finally, the RJ45 cable for connecting Ethernet, giving us our internet connection. First off, we've got a separate microphone port right down here that we are not going to be using at this time, but it's there just in case you want to. Next up, our RJ45 connector. We'll plug that in right over here. And then we've got our HDMI out cable. As you can see right back here, we've got the HDMI out. This should be see the little monitor up here. That's our indication that we're gonna be plugging in right there. We've also got the HDMI in from the laptop. As of right now, the specs on the website say that this is a roadmap item, the support for your uh, HDMI in capabilities, but that's where it'll be. And then you've also got a couple of uh, the two USB 3.0 ports here. And finally, our power connection right here on the far right. And as you'll see down here, our Kensington lock in case we wanna lock the device in place. A couple things I wanna point out as we were cabling up at the back of the device here, we did not get this smart cable plugged in, which actually goes into the monitor, enabling our touch experience from the monitor to the uh, RXV80 itself that plugs in via USB. The other USB peripheral that we did not uh, plug in when we were plugging everything else in was our RX10, the speakerphone. Plugs into that second USB port right there. We've got the very top of our touch enabled monitor here. It doesn't have to be touch enabled. It can be just a regular monitor and you can use the remote. But if it is touch enabled, then there you go. You don't have to worry about uh, using the remote. So we've got the RXV80 right here. And you can see we've got this little lip right there. And then this adjustable spot down here. Now on both the inside of the lip and right here, you have a very grippy uh, surface that will hold this thing in place as it sits on top. So we literally just put the lip over the front of the device and then we adjust this back and it has a pretty stiff hinge to, in order to not be wobbling around or moving when you don't want it to be. And we make little adjustments until it has the angle we want. Now, if we slide this thing around, we'll get all our cables up here on the table so they don't pull on anything. We slide this around and there it sits right on the top of our monitor. Okay, with the monitor now plugged in, we are ready to power up the RXV80. As it powers on, we see the lights flash up top. It is waking up. It obviously detects that there is a monitor there. We get the Microsoft Teams logo. And our brightness does make that come in. It's kind of blue, but it is the Teams purple and the audio code logo beneath that.
And just like with plugging any other Teams room system or collab bar in for the first time, they need to do their little startup and first time setup. So we'll give this thing a couple minutes to get done here. All right. Okay. That was really quick. We are now ready to sign in to the device. Uh, we've got our sign in at the bottom, you can see, with our settings up top. So I'm going to go ahead and click the sign in button. And again, touch screen connected with the smart cable up to the RXV80 so that we, via USB, so that we can use our hands rather than the remote control for our sign in. Let's go ahead and get signed in here. Now, something I usually like to do with this screen is rather than saying this and then entering all the information with my finger, I prefer to say sign in from another device. This gives me a code and we can get signed in on a laptop. I'm going to do that right now. All right, after signing in on my laptop using a personal account rather than a room account, I could use a room account here, which is probably advisable with a shared device like the RXV80 up top. We're Okay, after signing in on the laptop, we do have MFA enabled on my personal account, which is what we're using. I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. And with the correct code, it, finished signing, it finishes signing us in with MFA, registering the device in the company portal as we usually expect. And we are getting signed in with Microsoft Teams. Very good stuff. So that was pretty painless. We plugged the device in pretty quickly, set it right on top of our uh, touch enabled monitor, plugged in the smart cable via USB that allows us to use the touch monitor for input instead of the remote, and then signed in after it booted up. It was a very quick boot up. The sign in was done from another device using MFA that we could have signed in right from the screen ourselves, And we're presented with all the familiar Microsoft Teams um, app capabilities on this main screen here. And we could dial people if dialing capabilities were included. We have the ability to launch a new meeting here as well by inviting someone. And then of course, if we go into more, this is where we can start a new meeting, dial pad, same thing, control our volume down here. And settings, we have our calling settings. The calling settings give us the call forwarding capability, the also ring or simultaneous ring, the if unanswered, and you can see we're going to voicemail over there. Down here we've got the change voicemail greetings. We can manage our voicemail right from here as well. Uh, ringtones, block calls, lots of capabilities right here for calls. Going back out, proximity join is turned on. We can turn that off if we want to. There it is. Proximity join again gives you the ability to detect that this meeting room is available if the schedule permits via Bluetooth from a nearby device and automatically join the meeting. Let's go ahead and leave that on because it's helpful. We can report an issue. We can go to our about settings. This will give us our firmware, the actual version of the software itself. Um, and then we can come back out, sign out of the device if we want to and go into device settings. Here we've got our accessibility features, sound, we can reboot the device if need be. And again, our about information gives us the model, Android version, and any info related to the version. Device administration. So we have to log in with an admin here. After logging in as the administrator, you have the option to log out the user, do an account sign out, or change our password. Now that we're signed in as administrator, you'll see we have other settings down here as well. We've got our display settings. So we can set it to sleep after 10 minutes, change our, change our font size, and then of course do a screen saver, which is just a clock by default. We've got Wi-Fi capabilities. Instead of plugging in with a RJ45 connection, which I've done, we could use Wi-Fi. You've got the Bluetooth capabilities. Security, we go into security, we'll see that you've got your screen lock, which is none right now. Uh, show passwords, we are showing passwords on here. So you might wanna tighten up security from the out of the box standards. Languages and input, we can see that we've got our keyboard information here, a virtual keyboard option. You can plug in a physical keyboard if you wanna do that instead of navigating a keyboard with your uh, remote, unless you have a touchscreen enabled. If we go to modify network, you got your IP address. DHCP is the option for getting an IP address. Proxy settings, we can see that we're connected to the network and our 802.1x settings as well as VLAN. 
As you can see, we have now created a meeting and invited the account that is signed into this device, our Audio Codes RXV80 V10 demo call. Uh, I have invited myself. We're gonna come over here, and this is this is the whole room experience, right? You come in, you click join, and boom, the Microsoft Teams meeting launches. So we briefly had a bit of video until it puts us in the lobby. That's where we're sitting now. So let's go ahead and uh, admit this user. I'm gonna join from uh, my other machine. And we'll go ahead and keep our camera on. We're gonna turn our audio off and we're going to join now. And I can see I've got someone in the lobby. And horrible feedback. So we come over to our RX-10, we click the mute button up top. We can control our volume up or down right here. Down, volume, up, volume. Uh, we can answer the call this way as well if there was an incoming call as well as hang up the call and we've got bluetooth functionality up there as well if we need to connect uh, via bluetooth but uh, as you can see i'm going to go ahead and jump out of the meeting on this side so that we get a feel for the video capabilities on the other side so now that i'm out of the meeting on the uh, organizer side we can now see what it looks like to be in the call with just one user and we get the full experience of, uh, of the video. Of course, it's 1080p, right? Because we are, this is a Microsoft Teams meeting, even though it is a 4K camera with those capabilities, Microsoft Teams has 1080p meetings, so we've got that. But for being a nighttime video with uh, not the greatest of lighting, we have pretty good clarity. I mean, this is a good image on the, uh, on the monitor there. So. Uh, pretty cool uh, image capabilities from the RX V80 itself. Because we're in the call, you'll notice that we've got red uh, up top on our LED indicators, indicating that we are in the call. You also see red lit up all around the edges of our RX10 uh, as well. If we go ahead and unmute this now, uh, we can see that we are still in the call. It is green down here because we are in the call but we are not muted. So the red up top indicates that we are busy and in a call. Red on the RX-10 indicates that we're muted. So unmuting, we have green at the bottom. Uh, now we can either use the touch screen to end this experience. We've got the touch screen button and we can end the call that way. Or we can very simply click the end call button right here. And that ends our call for us. Taking a closer look at the RX-10 speakerphone, uh, we notice that it is powered on down here. We've got a little uh, charging icon up here indicating that the device is charging. Uh, that's good, that's what we want it to do. If we tap this outer rim, we see all of our buttons get lit up. Okay, we get a green, little green indicators to show us where everything is at. And then we see that we've got a answer button, hang up button, Bluetooth button if we need to connect to something uh, with Bluetooth and then a, a volume down, volume up button on either side. One last thing I want to demo, a brief use of the remote. As you'll notice, the remote has this little multi-directional pad up top. And if we look at the screen behind us as we push it, we can navigate around the screen using this pad. So we either go to join or we go to more. By clicking the middle, we make our selection and we can then navigate to the areas we need to navigate through. Punch in our number, um, go back up top and say, get, up, get me out of this window. And we can also go over to join and click join. This will pop us back into the meeting. There we are again, except we're waiting in the lobby because this was not our meeting. We, now that we're in the meeting, let's take a look at our options here. We can hang up the call. If a call is coming in, we could answer the call and we've got our volume up and down. Let's go ahead and turn up the volume. Let's turn down the volume. There we go. And, and finally, let's go ahead and hang up the call. So there you go. That is the RX V80 V10, the collaboration bar for Microsoft Teams offering from Audio Codes, consisting of two devices from the room experience suite that Audio Codes provides, 
the RXV80 all-in-one collaboration bar up top and the uh, RX10 speakerphone right down here at the bottom. So again, in my view, there's a couple different ways you would use this setup. One, the kiosk style setup. That's kind of what we got here, intended to be a one-on-one -on -one personal setup for someone to use. Come into a small booth area, have, your, have the setup in your office maybe as an executive, whatever the case is, you have the video bar sitting on top of a touchscreen monitor or a monitor that has a keyboard plugged in below, and you use it in a very one-to-one -one manner with your RX10 sitting right below here for the audio input. The other way is the huddle room option where you can, again, leave the collab bar sitting on top of a display if you want, or you can use the built-in mount that it ships with, mount it to the wall in a central part of the room so that the two to four people in that huddle space can gather around that central mounting point and all within six and a half feet, uh, which is the range that the RX10 speakerphone gives you. Thanks again for watching. I hope this was informative and helpful. As usual, please share it with all of your friends and colleagues all over Facebook, all over Twitter, all over LinkedIn, all the usual places. And if you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, well, what are you waiting for? The link is right below in the corner of this video. Subscribe and turn on notifications so that you stay in the know anytime I come out with another product overview video. Thanks again for watching, and I hope we'll see you back here on the next product overview.